Now Kansaki is honest to a fault. For her entire life, she was taught by her father to never lie or deceive others. Even her name means honesty. She's the kind of girl who would take a lost 100 yen coin to a police box so that it could hopefully be returned to its original owner, which, if you don't know, 100 yen amounts to 65 Russian rubles, 18 Mexican pesos, 6 Chinese yuan, or just about 1 US dollar. This is the kind of person Nao is, and while her strong sense of honesty is definitely something to be commended, it also comes with some more detrimental personality traits. She's gullible, believing almost everyone and taking their words at face value. Having such a strong sense of trust only makes it hurt that much more when she's deceived. Not being able to look past people's friendly facades, she never became close with any of her classmates, so even by the time she got to college, Nao never really made any genuine friends. The only person she has any real connection with being her father, who is hospitalized due to his terminal cancer, and only has about a year left to live. Despite her generally positive attitude and optimistic view of the world, there's this quiet sadness to Nao's life. She doesn't really have any plans for the future, nor does she have the drive to connect with people or find a passion. She just wants to be by her father's side while he lives the last remaining year of his life in peace. Her unfortunate circumstances combined with her naivete make you genuinely feel sorry for her because even though she's such a sweet and innocent person, many of her hardships stem from things that are seemingly out of her control. Nevertheless, she's content to live her modest, mundane life in relative peace. Until one day, when she receives 100 million yen, and a strange letter inviting her to a cruel game of deception where she must betray her own morals just to survive. This is our introduction to Liar Game. It's a psychological battle manga, so there's plenty of tricks and mindfuckery at play, but for the most part I'm going to be focusing more on the characters and themes rather than the moment to moment plot, so when I have to go over the story, I'll only mention the necessary developments for the sake of brevity and to avoid spoilers where I can. The world of Liar Game is portrayed as cruel and unfair, where bad things happen to good people and where the only way to survive is by mercilessly using other people as stepping stones on your way to the top. This struggle is represented by people's relationship to money. People need money to survive and live in society, but not everyone has the ability to work or the luxury of a steady income, which often leads to vulnerability and desperation. And while we may feel the need to help people like this, other, more sinister forces may see an opportunity to make more money. The manga regularly mentions scammers, con artists, predatory religious cults, and multi-level marketing businesses, which are basically just like pyramid schemes, and it depicts the unfeeling way that organizations like these can take advantage of desperate people. This paints the antagonists of the story as anyone who pursues monetary gain at the expense of other people's well-being. And while she isn't necessarily desperate or vulnerable, our main character is unfortunately very gullible. It doesn't take long for Nao's innocence to be taken advantage of, and we're quick to be shown just how depraved, greedy, and cynical people can be when given the right circumstances. The rules of the game are simple. You and your opponent both start off with 100 million yen, and after 28 days, representatives from the Liar game will visit both players to collect the 100 million. The only way to win is to have more money than your opponent at the time of collection, and since the money used in the game is specially marked, that means that the only way to get more money is to steal from your opponent. Now, understandably starts to panic, realizing that she has nobody she can turn to for help, but just as her anxiety is getting the better of her, she learns that, by some crazy stroke of luck, her opponent is actually her favorite teacher from middle school a man named Mr. Fujisawa. After meeting up and talking it out, they both decide to leave the money in a safe deposit box and return it to the Liar Game representatives once the 28 days are up. Now heads home and is finally able to relax. Until the next morning, when she gets another letter stating that not only has she lost the 100 million, but also that Fujisawa has gained 100 million. 
Nao runs over to his house, hoping that this is some kind of mistake, only to realize that her former teacher had been lying to her from the very start, and that she's been betrayed. Now, let's be honest, we all saw this coming from a mile away, and Nao seems like kind of an idiot for trusting this guy. Her image of Fujisawa as a kind and caring teacher quickly falls apart as he reveals that it was all just a front. Even though he paints himself as a victim of circumstance, it's clear to us that it was his own greed that caused him to lose his job, his family, and his faith in people's honesty. It's people like Fujisawa who are typically targeted by the Liar Game. People who have become so desperate and cynical that they'd be willing to put an innocent young woman into a lifetime's worth of debt just to save their own sorry ass. Fujisawa is portrayed as such a piece of shit that it really hammers home just how powerful the influence of money can be. But like I said, even before knowing all of this, it seemed pretty obvious that this dude was going to betray her, and I can totally understand if people find Nao unrelatable or even annoying because of how comically gullible she is early on. But what makes her such a compelling character is the way that she eventually grows and changes because of the liar game. She may be this innocent paragon of honesty right now, but her seemingly virtuous morals are constantly questioned and challenged by the people around her. One of those people being Nao's eventual partner, the legendary con artist Shinichi Akiyama. If you enjoy characters like Light Yagami or Lelouch v Britannia, then you'll freaking love this guy. But as you learn more about him, you'll find that there's many aspects of his personality that differentiate him from other highly intelligent characters. Akiyama was raised by his single mother who worked tirelessly to put him through university so that he can eventually live an honest, happy life. However, she eventually grew ill from overworking and, in her desperation, fell victim to a malicious multi-level marketing business. In a last-ditch effort to save her son from the crippling amount of debt she owed, Akiyama's mother took her own life. Seeking revenge, Akiyama infiltrated the MLM and dismantled it from the inside, using his knowledge of criminal psychology to swindle them out of all of their money. However, some of the methods he used were less than legal, which earned him a three-year sentence in prison. While he's drawn and portrayed as a bit of an edgelord, Akiyama's actually a pretty chill guy. He's more than capable of manipulating people, but his actions barely ever push his morality past a light grey. In fact, he chooses to mainly mind his own business, and only steps in when he feels like he can't ignore someone in trouble. And listen, I love characters like Light and Lelouch, but they're generally portrayed as these larger-than-life gigachads. However, with Akiyama, you get a much more down-to-earth character who has understandable motives grounded in personal loss, and capabilities that are rooted in his knowledge of criminal psychology, game theory, life experience, and his deep hatred for predatory organizations. Akiyama definitely shares a lot of surface-level traits with other characters of his archetype, but as the series goes on, you begin to peel back the layers and see that underneath his cool guy persona lies a flawed, human character. His plans aren't always perfect, evidenced early on by the fact that he literally got thrown into jail after taking down the MLM that ruined his mother's life. Three years later, he'd be released from incarceration only to stumble across none other than Nao herself, who desperately asks for his help. Not wanting to see another honest person fall victim to a faceless corporation, he begrudgingly decides to help her under the condition that he'll take half of her earnings. With this, Akiyama puts his plan into motion, declaring that he will steal the 200 million from Fujisawa. And it's at this point that I want to highlight the importance of Nao as our main character. The story is mostly told from Nao's perspective, so a lot of Akiyama's planning and scheming is left kind of ambiguous until he reveals his hand at the very end of each game. This works to keep tensions high early on, as both Nao and the reader aren't exactly sure how, or even if, Akiyama is going to win. This aspect of the narrative is actually subverted in a really clever way later on, and we will get back to that, but for right now, if she's in the dark, then so are we. But what's really cool is that no matter what the outcome is, it always makes sense within the context of the story. There are no contrivances or ass pulls, and the result of each game is always a logical conclusion built upon prior events and details. It may seem like Nao and Akiyama aren't making any meaningful progress towards stealing the 200 million, 
but in actuality, Akiyama is slowly wearing down Fujisawa's mental state, extracting key pieces of information from him and setting up all of the pieces of his plan so that they can eventually fall into place at the 11th hour. And at the last possible second, after all hope seems to be lost, Akiyama reveals his hand and steals the 200 million from Fujisawa, right before the Liar Game representatives show up. Nao returns her 100 million, gives Akiyama his cut of 50 million, and the remaining 50 million is hers to keep. As relieved as she is to finally be free of the Liar Game, Nao looks over at Fujisawa, realizing that he's now facing a debt of 100 million yen. At this point, we haven't seen much of the Liar Game organization, so the consequence of owing a debt to them is kind of ambiguous. But whatever it may be, with a debt of 100 million, Fujisawa's life is done for. What happens next defines Nao Kansaki and her philosophy towards the Liar Game. She takes her 50 million and gives it back to Fujisawa. Even after being manipulated, betrayed, and mocked, Nao still chooses to forgive Fujisawa and tries to save him from the Liar Game, asking only that he never lose faith in people's honesty ever again. This is the kind of person Nao is. No matter what, she always strives to see the best in people, and this affords her the strength to forgive others. She may not realize it now, but Fujisawa is the first of many people that she will save from the Liar Game. To most people, money means freedom, opportunity, and power. But much like the Liar Game itself, it can also be a trap, a tempting idea that preys on the weak-willed and corrupts people with the promise of greatness. These are the kinds of toxic ideals that the Liar Game is built for, as every facet of its design coerces people to give in to their greed. Even the cards explaining the rules only ever mention a winner and a loser, completely neglecting to acknowledge the possibility of a tie. So it's no wonder that a virtuous person like Nao is the perfect candidate to break this game. Her honesty and steadfast morals are what allow her to see the bigger picture and find the resolve to save those who are trapped by the liar game. Seeing this, Akiyama gives up his 50 million as well. As jaded as he might be, Nao's compassion still resonates with him, and it's obvious to Nao that beneath his dangerous exterior, Akiyama can be a genuinely caring person. To us as readers, it's obvious that Nao reminds Akiyama of his late mother, but instead of seeking revenge, Akiyama now has the opportunity to save an innocent soul from being taken advantage of. After what was probably the most intense, emotional, and stress-inducing month of her life, Nao can finally rest easy. Until she finds another mysterious note inviting her to the second round of the Liar Game. Yeah, so as it turns out, there's more than one round to the Liar Game, and what we just witnessed was only the first one, with each round having a different set of rules and introducing more players. A majority of the players take part in the Liar Game because they simply want money, and by joining the Liar Game for that reason, they're basically admitting that they're totally fine with screwing other people over and putting them in a lifetime's worth of debt. This simplistic motivation causes them to have a rudimentary understanding of the rules and forces them into risky, self-serving strategies. These types of players are usually manipulated by other players with a more nuanced understanding of the game which is typically informed by their unique reason for participating in the Liar Game. While the games themselves usually have a simple goal, it's the way that Akiyama and the other participants cleverly create systems within those simple rule sets and psychologically manipulate each other that keeps every round intensely engaging from beginning to end. The first half of each round is typically dedicated to understanding the various systems at play and setting up allegiances between players, while the second half shows the culmination of everyone's plans and ends with a clash of ideologies. Not to mention the emergence of more tangible stakes in the form of rumors stating that the Liar Game organization is tied to black market slave trade, and that those who lose the game may end up in deadly human trafficking rings. But most importantly, it's through these next few rounds that we're introduced to many of the fascinating philosophical musings and ideological dilemmas explored throughout this manga. 
While it's easy to see now as a victim of other people's manipulation and dishonesty, the manga makes it very clear that Nao's blind faith in people is a legitimate character flaw, and it uses this aspect of her personality to explore the dangers of ideological extremity. Akiyama calls her out on multiple occasions and shows her the subtle ways in which her seemingly virtuous morals are actually very flawed. Through both its characters and its world, Liar Game plays with the idea of accountability, and it brings up some really interesting questions about personal responsibility. At what point and to what extent can someone be blamed for being deceived? Whose fault is it really? Is it the perpetrator's fault for lying, or is it the victim's fault for believing in that lie? The answers to these questions usually fall somewhere in the middle, never being so simple as right or wrong. It's ideas like these that have me constantly coming back to and thinking about Liar Game. And while some of these ideas are left open to interpretation, there are plenty that get thoroughly explored through the various viewpoints of different characters. What does it truly mean to trust someone? Is it something that's unconditional, or does it have to be earned? Is trust more valuable when it can be substantiated by logic? For someone like Akiyama, the answer is fairly cut and dry. Blind faith is nothing more than apathy. He explains that Nao's unwillingness to doubt people is what's caused her to feel so isolated for such a long time, and that the only way to truly understand someone is to doubt them. Imagine all of the acquaintances in your life that aren't your close friends. If you aren't interested enough in them as a person, then you have no reason to question anything they say. You just take their words at face value, or if you're a weirdo, you'll make assumptions about them without actually asking, and continue on with your day. It's only when you actively try to connect with someone that you begin really listening to what they tell you. And I'm not saying that people just spontaneously lie for no reason, or that you necessarily have to call people out on lies to build a relationship, but it's natural for people to be a bit reserved when talking to someone they aren't close with. If they have an opinion that doesn't make sense to you, or if you just want to know more about them, you question them, and you doubt them. Once they elaborate, then good job, you've gotten to know this person a little better. The characters also discuss things like the nature of guilt. Akiyama mentions the idea of a guilty conscience, which actually brings to light a genuinely fascinating question of what it means to be a good person. Does having a conscience that makes you feel guilty when you've wronged someone mean that, deep down, you're a genuinely good person? Does not having a guilty conscience automatically make you evil? If you're only being nice to others to avoid feeling guilty, then doesn't that kind of make you a selfish person? Then again, if the end result is that you act like a better person that benefits not only yourself, but also those around you, then isn't that all that really matters? If someone is righteous despite not having a guilty conscience, then wouldn't that make them an even better person because they act for the sake of good even though they themselves get no personal gain or satisfaction? Do intentions even matter at that point? This is the kind of introspective, self-critical thinking that I really love about Liar Game. It asks us to really think about the things that we do, the reasons why we do them, and if those reasons even matter. And throughout the story, you can see Nao begin to internalize these ideas along with her own flaws in order to become a more conscientious, self-aware person. Her growth is very gradual, which makes it all the more believable when she does do something substantial. For most of the early chapters, Nao is able to rely almost entirely on Akiyama's guidance. However, with each passing round, you can see her becoming more independent as their character dynamic evolves from a one-sided reliance to something more reminiscent of a master and apprentice. Having Akiyama explain different concepts within psychology and game theory to Nao is a fun and clever way to convey that information to the audience who's probably just as clueless to these things as she is. While both of them are cooperating towards the same end goal, they still have fundamentally different mindsets which actually end up complementing each other and allow them to hold a unique presence within the Liar Game. With Akiyama's help, Nao figures out that the Liar Game organization can only profit off of these games by having players go into debt or make a big enough profit so that they can drop out. So if they can play the games in such a way that causes everyone to tie, they can make sure that nobody loses and that the Liar Game organization doesn't profit. 
because from Nao's perspective, it isn't the other players that are her enemies, the Liar game itself is the enemy. This is alluded to in the first round, but it's here that Nao truly solidifies her resolve. She will beat the Liar game, not by winning the most money or coming out on top, but by saving all of the other players. To Nao, the ultimate way to beat the Liar game is to play it as a game of trust, where the win condition is cooperation. And I think that this aspect of Nao's character is probably my favorite part of the series. While the fun characters and engaging psychological battles are some of the most enjoyable parts of the manga, I think that the main appeal of Liar Game lies within Nao and her growth as a person. To show you what I mean, I want to walk you through the moments that made me basically fall in love with this manga. It happens about a fourth of the way through the entire series, so skip to this timecode if you want to avoid spoilers. If you're into game theory, then you might have already noticed this, but Akiyama identifies the Liar game as a zero-sum game, which is basically a system in which all gains and losses net to zero. There are a couple other instances of game theory like Chicken or the Prisoner's Dilemma which really help spice up some of the rounds, so if you're into stuff like that, you'll have a really good time. Nao and Akiyama continue to play the game, intending to save everyone along the way and eventually dismantle the Liar Game organization from the inside out. For a while, their strategy seems to be working, with Akiyama acting as the brains of the operation, while Nao is something more of a moral compass. However, they eventually meet their ultimate foil in the form of Norihiko Yokoya, a player that makes them question their beliefs and shakes their ideology to its very core. Yokoya believes that the only possible way to truly trust someone is to put them in a situation where it would be actively detrimental for them to defy you. To Yokoya, the Liar Game is a game of domination, where the best way to win is by bending people to your will with ultimatums and leverage. But as long as you submit to domination, you will be taken care of. In a way, it's kind of a twisted reflection of Nao and Akiyama's strategy to cooperate with everyone, and parallels are regularly drawn between Yokoya and Akiyama. Their conflict is framed by the Contraband Game, a game in which two opposing teams try to smuggle money through a checkpoint without being called out. Players from each team are regularly isolated with each other, creating opportunities for them to secretly establish allegiances and betray other players without them even knowing. It may be a team game, but there are also personal consequences for each player depending on their individual performances during the game. As the contraband game continues, Yokoya's strategy puts an extreme amount of strain on Nao and Akiyama's team dynamic. While Akiyama continuously thinks of new strategies and ways to use the systems of the game, Yokoya always seems to be one step ahead of them. Some of Yokoya's tactics even begin to mirror the psychological tricks that Akiyama uses, which shows that despite their ideological differences, their approach to playing the Liar game is more similar than it appears. Akiyama's team begins to fall apart as they lose more and more money to Yokoya's team, and for the first time, we see Akiyama lose control of the situation, as he realizes that his current methods won't be enough to win the game. It's at this point where you start to notice that most of this arc has been shown through Akiyama's perspective instead of Nao's. We don't hear as much of her thoughts, and are instead shown more of Akiyama's inner turmoil and anxiety. Nao, on the other hand, is uncharacteristically calm and composed. Even when Akiyama and the rest of the team are freaking out, she simply stands there, contemplating her next move. She takes on a much more active position instead of purely reacting to the situation around her. So in essence, the roles are switched, and this time, it's Nao who's hiding something from the reader. As the contraband game continues, Akiyama becomes increasingly desperate, eventually resorting to convincing players from the opposing team to betray Yokoya, with the promise that if they cooperate, they'll have enough money to drop out of the Liar game. As time passes, things actually start to look up for Akiyama's team, and after an agonizing game of back and forth, they actually win the contraband game. However, what they didn't realize was that despite his team losing, 
Yokoya was actually able to steal an incredible sum of money from all of the other players, putting Akiyama, Nao, and even players from his own team into huge amounts of debt. With the amount of money he has, Yokoya can easily drop out of the game, leaving other players with no possible way to get the money back from him. Akiyama is left absolutely speechless, as Yokoya berates him and points out his hypocrisy. In this moment, he has completely and utterly failed. So you can imagine my surprise when Nao is the one who steps up to challenge Yokoya. She points out that while he did earn the most money, he had to betray his method of domination to do it. Not only did three of his team members betray him, but even those who stayed loyal to him ended up in the red, while everyone who cooperated with Nao didn't lose any money. Yokoya counters by pointing out that both she and Akiyama now face a debt of 400 million, but Nao has one last trick up her sleeve that will allow her to get all of their money back by circumventing the zero-sum rule. Yokoya may have won the most money, but in the end, Nao ends up winning the ideological battle. As cool as that is, that doesn't explain how she plans to circumvent the zero-sum rule. If Yokoya drops out right now, then the money he takes from the game will leave all of the other players with an enormous debt and allow the Liar game to make a huge profit. You might be thinking that, by definition, it's literally impossible to circumvent a zero-sum game. In which case, you are absolutely right, because Nao's secret plan is nothing more than a bluff. A final fuck you to Yokoya, and the perfect way to bait him into the next round of the Liar game. I can't begin to tell you how amazed I was when I read this for the first time. Seeing Nao completely turn the tables in a situation where she literally lost, and prevent the Liar game from profiting with a simple lie, was honestly incredible. All of this coming from the same girl who took that 100 yen coin to the police box so that it could hopefully be returned to its original owner. This is the moment that made me absolutely fall in love with this manga. It's such a cathartic culmination of character arcs and ideas that have been meticulously built up over dozens of chapters. I was really afraid that Akiyama was always going to be this unstoppable 3000 IQ galaxy brain savant of manipulation, and that Nao would always be this helpless klutz that needed saving. But the contraband game shows us completely new sides to these characters. We get to see such a wide range of emotion from them, which really fleshes them out as believable people, and this is helped in no small part by the incredibly interesting art style. Man, I really dig the artwork for this series. I can't speak to Shinobu Kaitani's other works, but the art style here is very clean, if a bit unrefined at times. There's detail where there needs to be, but there's also this sense of minimalism with some of the characters, backgrounds, and shading. There usually isn't too much in the way of physicality per se, but there are some panels where the characters are drawn with these super harsh shadows that really make them pop off the page. I love the use of stark black and white, it really helps accentuate some of these expressions. The volume covers are also pretty fire, usually with the characters rocking some sophisticated drip. I really like the colored pages too, just look at how evocative some of this artwork is. The cover of volume 1 is one of my personal favorites. The very first thing that catches your eye is Nao's expression. Her uneasiness and anxiety are perfectly captured in one image, and it's a really great representation of her general character early on in the series. She's wearing a bright red shirt, which is an indication of her steadfast morality and determination. It's a beautiful color that fits with the general aesthetic of the manga, and it's pretty much the main color of the series. Piercing through all the red is a bright silver cross, and while there's no direct mention of Christianity as far as I know, besides the whole cherub and angel motif found on the Liar Game cards, it nevertheless represents Nao's purity and unwavering virtue in the face of adversity. Behind her is Akiyama, bearing an extremely observant, calculating expression. He's much more composed than Nao, but he's just as intensely focused. He's wearing light blue in contrast to Nao's bright red, signifying them as somewhat opposites, with him being more calm and cool. 
Behind both of them is an infinite black void with the Liar game trying to entrap them in a tempting golden frame. The clean line work, use of mostly flat shading, and simple gradients complements the feel of a game based around money and deception. It's not particularly gritty, and physical violence will only get you so far, so it fits the general vibe of the narrative. While I personally really enjoy the artwork, I will acknowledge that it's not exactly the main reason that someone should read the manga. Characters seem a bit off sometimes, certain details are kind of inconsistent, and there are just a handful of times where the eyes are a bit off, like they're looking in slightly different directions. And just as a heads up, a lot of the manga is just talking heads. But the thing is, I'm a freaking weirdo, and I honestly find this stuff really charming. Even coming off of series like Berserk and Vagabond as some of my very first experiences with manga, I still really enjoy weird, quirky art. And of course, that's not to say that the artwork is bad by any means. It visually conveys the story in a way that enhances the narrative instead of distracting or detracting from it. Not to mention that there are a few panels here and there where Kaitani really flexes his drawing skills, like some of the chapter covers and insert pages. There's also plenty of memes to go around, so you know, that's always a plus. But there is this one reoccurring quirk of the art style which you may or may not have noticed depending on which panels I used while editing. I'm talking about the weird mouth thing. Basically, whenever a character is extremely shocked, surprised, distressed, or otherwise flamboyantly upset, they seemingly dislocate their jaw in order to open their mouth as wide as humanly possible. Exaggerated proportions are a staple in most anime and manga, but by keeping the rest of the face mostly on model, it can seem a bit uncanny at first. Don't get me wrong, it really gets the job done in conveying the extreme emotions that these characters go through, but as the series goes on, I feel like we see way less of the mouth thing. So if it bothers you, don't worry, it's not as prevalent as you might think. To put it simply, the characters find much more nuanced ways to freak the fuck out. All jokes aside though, I think that one of Kaitani's artistic strengths is the portrayal of emotion. From the highest joys to the deepest despair and everything in between, there's such a fantastic range of expressions in Kaitani's artwork. It's clear that these people are very human, and this contrasts greatly with the Liar Game organization, which is portrayed as this unfeeling, literally faceless corporation. While most of its influence on society is invisible from an outsider's perspective, we begin to see just how powerful they are as Nao gets deeper into the game. It's a simple but effective use of symbolism that shows how huge corporations can put up a front to lure in and take advantage of vulnerable people while holding no accountability for their destructive actions. The manga regularly makes allusions to real-world organizations that target people for money, and one of the main appeals of the series is the catharsis of witnessing the main characters overthrow a corrupt system through camaraderie and cooperation. The Liar Game paints the players as enemies in order to isolate them and make them feel desperate, but by learning to trust one another, people can rise above their selfishness and act for the mutual benefit of themselves and those around them. And that's what makes Nal's journey throughout Liar Game so compelling. She learns and adapts to the harsh realities of the world without becoming cynical or losing her virtue, and this lets her not only be more independent, but it also allows her to make meaningful connections with other people. It highlights the empowerment that comes from personal responsibility and agency, which is honestly a fantastic message in my opinion. Through her, Liar Game is able to beautifully convey the idea that nothing in life is ever as simple as black and white. Truths and lies, trust and doubt, honesty and deception. All of these things have their own place in the world, and to deny that would mean denying reality. While it's true that people can be apathetic, selfish, and cruel, there are also those who are capable of the deepest love and compassion. Liar Game simply asks that you recognize the realities of life, the good, the bad, and everything in between, so that you can better yourself and the world around you. Hey, so normally I'd include some extra thoughts about the subject of the video here, but since I just spent the past year and a half talking about Liar Game, I'll just make some announcements instead. I made a Twitter account, which makes it that much easier to cancel me in case anyone's interested. And I've also got a Patreon where you can help the channel out and get your name in the credits by pledging a dollar or more per video. 
My current model is per video instead of per month because my upload schedule is pretty inconsistent and unlike Akiyama over here, I'm not interested in swindling anybody. I only have one tier right now, but I might make some higher tiers with more benefits in the future. I'd like to think of each dollar I receive as a shimmering droplet of water that soaks the delicate little flower garden that is this channel. I also want to thank ExpressVPN for partnering with me. You can click the link in the description if you want to sign up for ExpressVPN and help out the channel. You even get 3 extra months free if you get the 12 month plan using my link. That's expressvpn.com slash schnoz. I've personally been using it since early July of this year and it's pretty sick. Not only is your online privacy protected, but you also get to change your online location, so you can access content that normally wouldn't be available in your country. You literally just open the app, set your location to a region of your choice, turn it on, and bada bing bada boom, no more location restrictions. Places like Australia and the UK have a lot of anime that's straight up not available on North American Netflix. They've got a bunch of Ghibli movies, and even a nice handful of Makoto Shinkai movies, which is pretty sick. Other countries have other stuff too, so if you want to do that, and keep your internet privacy safe, then you can use the link in the description to sign up and help the channel out. I want to thank ExpressVPN for partnering with me, and I want to thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one.